Hey, buddy. Are you okay? Oh, goodness me. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. It rained. Yeah, and it's cold. 12 degrees? What, you had a night of 8? But you're looking great. This is kind of the weather that you like, no? Look at you all in bloom. Well, you're up. You're up. It's blooms for you. We have to dedicate some blooms, cousin it. I'm serious. I'm sorry to bother you, but I know you're snug in your corner, but yeah. Can we... Can we get you out of there? Maybe lift your spirits a little bit, put you in the viewfinder? Maybe? Hello. I'm sorry. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show everybody blooms that were not dedicated because, you know, life got in the way. While I get you a little bit more pristine, primped, and with your sunshades on. I know you don't need them. I know you don't need your glasses, but it's part of who you are, so... Yeah, let me, let me show the other blooms while we have a chat and lift your spirits, okay? I promise you'll feel better just now. I'll be gentle, I promise. I'll be gentle. Hang on a second. Let me get to you. Ooh, you're wet. Hang on a second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. I won't drop you. Make sure King is not between my feet. I've got you. Oh, you're heavy. All right. Hang on a second. Let's have a look-see. Make sure that you're stable. You don't fall over. You look amazing, cousin it. You just look amazing. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You look amazing. You're wet. It's not exactly the perfect hairdo, but you're fine. You're fine. Just checking to make sure that we can remove some blooms if they're old, okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. Which angle do you want today? Which one do you think is best? Is this the one? Is this the better angle? Yeah, you calling the shots today. Whatever you say, I know. I feel bad because clearly I can go inside and try to stay warm, whereas you have to deal with the circumstances. What, still another turn? Hang on a second. Oh my goodness, so many blooms, cousin it. So many blooms. Another turn? All right, look, okay, I promised you that you get your way today. This has got the most blooms, all right? Let me get your glasses. Oh, I see another bloom that needs to come off, and another one. But you still have so many left. I'm going to get your glasses, okay? Don't worry, don't worry, they love you, even if you're wet. Okay, don't worry about it. There you go. <laughs> smile, cousin it, smile. You are looking amazing. Maybe a little bit wet, but you are looking amazing. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on a Blooms For You dedication video. It's good to have you here. If it's your first time, this is Cousin It. Yes, this video will be a little bit longer than usual because I am way behind on my dedications, but I am not going to be denied dedicating blooms that I've seen for several months in bloom that I've had on my mind that I couldn't film because of circumstances. So we're going to take our sweet time, also accommodate Cousin It a little bit. It is a very, very cold week and he's been outside all this time, but look at him. He's got a little bit of an ego ding at the moment because he's wet. He doesn't feel like he looks the part. I should be cleaning his leaves, but look at the size of him. Good grief. Cleaning the leaves. It's going to rain again. I think we'll be okay. We are here to enjoy the blooms. Give Cousin It a like, please. It will help with his self-esteem. I was wondering if I would ever get a video to 100 likes from when it airs to within two days. I haven't achieved that yet, but it would be fabulous for Cousin It if it would be a first time for that to happen. So hit that like button for him. He is doing his best to stay cheerful. It's a bit difficult. <laughs> anyway, I want to give a shout out to all the Orchid Ninjas. I'm going to be using the image as per usual when she was in her prime, Lady Chatterley. That is your orchid. I want to say thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. It means the world to me. Cousin It is here in bloom. For anybody that has not been mentioned in this video with the upcoming blooms that have been in bloom, spikes and buds have been taken off to give the orchids a rest. We've got some very difficult trying times coming ahead in the next 10 days or two weeks. The temperatures are going to be extremely challenging. But 
I did not want those blooms to go to waste, like unfortunately the blooms you saw earlier. These are precious to me and the names that were coming up on the list are precious to me as well. So, Orchid Ninjas, your support is very much appreciated. Thank you so, so much for your vote of confidence. And thank you everybody that has tuned into this video to see whose names have come up, which orchids have bloomed, and again, if your name has not been mentioned then. This spectacle that Cousin It is putting on for us all these blooms they bloom for you as a massive thank you on our behalf for supporting the channel the way that you do watching liking and subscribing sharing would be awesome as well any opportunity to make cousin it feel a lot better and help the channel grow is so appreciated so let's go and have a look see what has been going on An orchid without a bloom. <laughs> Bulbophyllum disiflorum. I am not trying to trick you. Sia Mac E. I have had her in bloom. She is a first time bloomer for me in 2022. I know that this dedication is very, very late. Yes, time constraints, weather constraints, noise pollution constraints, so many constraints. I couldn't get to filming her in bloom to do the dedication. Oh, but I have footage for you. And Sia Mac A, know that. <laughs> I was thinking of you when she was in bloom because your name came up on the list. Anyway, celebrating my Bulbophyllum disiflorum, first time bloomer. She has a beautiful fragrance of freshly cut grass and I very much enjoy that. It is a Bulbophyllum. I bought her with the synonym of Trias disiflora because I thought the bloom was funky looking, it was different and it is a very compact grower. It's a miniature. I always thought I was going to have a problem with her. She was going to be my challenge because she likes high humidity, which I do not have. She likes to be in warm temperatures all year round, which I do not have all year round. And when I do have high temperatures, it turns out I don't have the humidity. Anyway, she was a challenge. So when her first little bud started to show, I was over the moon happy, looked at my list and lo and behold, there was Siamak E. So, she is dedicated to you. The only thing is the Disiflora is because of her lip. It should be more disc shape. You can see that mine is a little bit more elongated. I don't see the disc shape at all, but it doesn't matter. She's at least not mislabeled and that is a bonus. I do love all the markings and as this orchid starts to grow from strength to strength, it'd be wonderful to see more of these blooms pop out. The bloom lasted two weeks. Now, I don't know if that is the lifespan of the bloom in general. It was her first time blooming with me, so maybe it has a longer bloom duration. We'll just have to wait and see. But for the two weeks that she was there, I was very, very happy to say everything is going well and she is now a mature blooming size orchid. After I received her with a few little bulbs and then some of those bulbs started to desiccate. I don't want to say rot out. It didn't appear to be rotting out, but it always is a concern when a miniature orchid comes into your collection. The first thing that happens is the desiccation of structures when you are desperately in need of those structures for the orchid to survive. She has pulled through fabulously in her semi-hydro setup with grit and akadama. I'm hoping to get more humidity around the plant because of the akadama and so far it is working. Meanwhile, I hope it continues to stay that way as she matures because <laughs> if this orchid gets bigger, of course, the challenges of keeping her happy will also increase. But for now, Siamak E, my Bulbophyllum disiflorum, Synonym Trias Disiflora. I can't get away from the name that I bought her with. She bloomed for you, even though currently she's not in bloom anymore. I do hope that you like the bloom. And if it's still a little bit dodgy looking, look at the clip again, because bit by bit, this little bloom has so much charm. Also with the floppy little lips that the Bulbophyllums always come with fun to play with. <laughs> Just don't pollinate your own bloom if that is not what you want to do when you play with your Bulbophyllum lips. <laughs> Freshly cut grass, who doesn't like that? And the notorious reputation of having weird and often unpleasant fragrances. Not this one. 
Sia Mac E, thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. And I will call her Trias Disiflora. She blooms for you. You may look at the blooms of my Dendrobia Victoria Regina and go, um, yeah, we're not used to this from Blooms For You dedication videos because you are quite right, these blooms look tired and old. However, unfortunately, I was not able to film a dedication clip while they were in their prime. I kept waiting for five blooms to open and look beautiful all together. That didn't work out this time around. However, I do want to dedicate all the five blooms while they were pristine by showing you the progress of this orchid as she came into her second flush of blooms. And I don't wanna miss out on those blooms. So as a thank you for the support on my channel, my Victoria Regina has bloomed, still is in bloom, although a little bit tired, for Svika Sade, Tito Figuereo, Mom, Ellie Meisler, and Janice Lindegard. To all of you, I know, the main clip doesn't look the part, but everything else is just gorgeous. I think it was because of the weather conditions that the blooms didn't sort of open in one go. I had one bud open, looking amazing, and then the other two buds on the same cluster were taking their sweet time. Oh, and then the bloom started to fade. I couldn't capture it at the time because the bottom cane with the two buds hadn't matured yet and not opened. So it was a little bit of a, yeah, I, I wanted to wait. Anyway, all the footage, all the clips and everything like that, I hope that they make up for the fact that right now the main clip is a tired looking Dendrobium Victoria Regina blooming. This is not to say that my appreciation for your support on my channel is any less appreciated. On the contrary, I want you to know that for months I have been documenting, watching, hoping, ready to film, but it never seemed to come to the perfect timing. But know that Svika Sade, Tito Figuereo, Mom, Ellie Meisler, and Janice Lindegard, know that I appreciate you so very, very much. Your support on the channel is massive. I hope that you are doing well in your part of the world. The orchid herself is doing great. She's living la vida. This is her time to shine, basically growing new growth, although be it very, very slowly. That's her jam but the cooler temperatures, the bright sunshine, everything like that is absolutely to her liking. So she is getting fertilized as if it was the grow season. Well, let me qualify that. For Dendrobium Victoria Regina, this is her grow season because <laughs> being slow, a little bit of progress is easier to observe this time of year than if we were to find ourselves in the warmest months of the year in summer. Being a cool grower, she loves it. She's had plenty exposure to rain, plenty exposure to colder temperatures, and the fluctuations made the blooming a little bit off, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, know that to the five of you, once again, Svika Sade, Tito Figuereo, Mom, Eli Meisler, Janice Lindegard, my Dendrobium Victoria Regina. All these months up to filming this clip, I've had you on my mind. And every time I looked at the blooms, the buds, egging them on, encouraging them to bloom out, I've always thought of the five of you and thanked you in thought. I really appreciate having you here. Thank you so, so much. Please forgive me for putting some tired blooms of my Oncidesa sweet sugar into the viewfinder. However, I've been documenting her progress, knowing full well I wouldn't be able to film a dedication clip on time. But I'm not going to miss out on dedicating the spike that I grew in my care on this beautiful orchid. And I've dedicated the spike to Brave Heart, Open Mind and Natalie Burgos. Now, I know the main clip has the tired blooms, but I hope that you enjoy the footage and the images of the blooms while they were at their prime. It was very difficult because of the temperature conditions, the whole climate influences, the buds wouldn't open all at once. Seems to be the story of my life at the moment with my orchids in bud. 
Depending on the temperature and the light conditions, I may have some buds opening prematurely while the others are stalling, so it's not a beautiful consecutive blooming all in one go. But still, I couldn't not dedicate these. So proud of myself because this orchid was gifted to me. And being on a mount, it is very challenging for my warm climate during the warm months of the year to keep her happy. So seeing that the growth started to mature and produce a spike, there was absolutely no way. I was just going to let them bloom out and say, yeah, well, not this time, maybe next time. So Braveheart, Open Mind and Natalie Burgos, my Oncidesa Sweet Sugar, she has been blooming for you for the past two months. Very, very hardy orchid. She's been all the way down to 10 degrees Celsius. I know that sounds harsh. I do test my orchids as they come new to my collection to see what they can withstand one season after another until I've had them for a whole year. 10 degrees Celsius has not affected her, has not affected the blooming. And if you see any of the spotting now on the lip of the blooms, that is of course because of the humid conditions and what I've put her through. They have only just appeared recently, which is also acceptable and understandable considering that the blooms are now aging. But she is already starting on her next new growth on the lead. It is developing rather slowly, which is also understandable. It is a little bit too cold, not enough sunshine, but still we are on the move. Even if that growth doesn't bloom out, I'm going to be very, very pleased to see some more root growth. I am super surprised, pleasantly surprised, and very grateful that this orchid has settled in so nicely into my somewhat harsh climate without humidity and being on a mount. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel, Braveheart, Open Mind, and Natalie Burgos. The two of you are very, very much appreciated. I hope everything is going well in your part of the world and that the new year is already proving to be exactly what you were hoping it to be. There is something so powerful in the simplicity of this Brasavola Cordata. She's not showy, but that makes her all the more attractive. She doesn't have flashy colors, but that makes her all the more attractive. You have to really get into these blooms to be able to appreciate the intricate design, the beauty, just the simplicity of them. However, her power is in her fragrance. And that fragrance I will describe after I've said thank you so much to Helena Severa, Ray Subrata, and Yensi Edit. I hope I said those names correctly. And if I didn't, I do apologize. I hope to be able to make that up to you by telling you about the fragrance of this orchid. She is fragrant at night. As you might know, a lot of orchids that are white and don't have any flashy colors, they have to do something to attract pollinators. And it just so happens that a lot of white orchids, at least in my collection, they are fragrant at night. And this one is no different. So the three blooms themselves are pretty intense. They have a beautiful lemony fragrance. There is a kick of, you know, essential oil of lemon with a mix of soapy jasmine. So something industrial, but along the lines of perfume. If you were to try to recreate this fragrance in, let's say, a laboratory, you would probably fail because the industrial would be much, much more enhanced as opposed to how the two fragrances mix and blend in the blooms of this orchid. And just like with any other pollinator that is attracted to this fragrance, I too go to her a lot at night while she's in bloom so that I can enjoy it. Pretty much you don't need a light to find her if you just follow your nose, but she is not overpowering, overbearing until you're approximately a meter away from her. Then you can really zero in on the orchid because that is when you know you are super close. The closer you get, the more of the soapy layer of the fragrance comes through. The further you are away, the more of the citrus and the jasmine comes through. Very, very intricate. And I'm going to repeat myself just like at the beginning. That is a powerful simplicity to have for blooms that literally look like just beautiful little, what, cake decorations? Something that doesn't really look real? Oh, I love me anything Brasavola. Anyway, I do sincerely hope that Elena Chevera, 
Ray Subrata and Yensi Edit are into Brassavola orchids themselves and if not why not give them a go especially the Gordata you can see how beautifully she grows upright you can see she grows easily in a pot doesn't matter the setup doesn't matter the media and she's not that large she is not a shelf hog except when it comes to her fragrance but who doesn't want that <laughs> oh and she's a very reliable bloomer maybe a little bit slow on the growth front it would be nice to eventually get two leads out of this orchid and have this display and fragrance intensity doubled but considering that i sometimes don't have the perfect conditions for her i'm just happy she's alive and she's doing this year after year Thank you to the three of you, Helena Chavera, Ray Subrata, and Yensi Edit. Your support on my channel is so very much appreciated, and I dedicate my Brassavola Cordata blooms to you to say a massive thank you for being so supportive. She doesn't look like much. Oh, <laughs> and of course her spike is coming out over a part of the pot that is broken. So I do apologize for this rather untidy looking presentation, Dave T. But this is my little Oncidium Eva Inno de la Madrugada that I would like to dedicate these cute blooms to you. They remind me of a popcorn haruri, but on steroids because the blooms are larger. Dave T, thank you so very much for your support on my channel. I know this doesn't look like much, but wow, the fact that she is blooming again, not as prolific as she was last year, that is testimony to the resilience of this hybrid. The orchid itself seems to be struggling a little bit, and I will be changing her setup when the time comes, when she throws out new growths. Even though the pseudobulbs look a little bit shriveled, they are always a little bit on the wrinkly side, so it's not like she is dying. She's just not having the greatest of times in the lecker. In future, I will put her into a lava rock with a semi-hydro setup, and I think she'll be so, so much happier in that environment. However, for now, we're talking about the blooms, Dave T, to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. This is your dedication. And even though I was hoping for more blooms, the conditions are as such that she couldn't get enough light to really give me a beautiful bloom spectacle. So the four blooms, well, that is just, again, testament to her resilience, and at least she did bloom for us. There is no fragrance to these blooms at all, but I love the little details. You could say that she is the dancing lady of a different color. If you were to put them in a row instead of yellow, she is the white one. She has the similar structures with that big wide skirt, which makes her look super elegant. And when you look up close, everything that is going on around the column, all that yellowy nonsense is just gorgeous very understated you would think there's not much to see here but when you get closer oh yeah she is cute i don't know if i mentioned or not but she is not fragrant unfortunately or if she is supposed to be i don't have a fragrance based on the conditions that i have i believe she would prefer to have it warmer well i'm with her on that point just a tad warmer would be nice and as we cruise into spring, just a little bit warmer. <laughs> we don't want to be greedy, but yeah, in the meantime, this is what she's given us. So Dave T, I dedicate my little Eva Himno de la Madrugada, which means that whoever Eva is or was, she was singing a hymn at sunrise. That is the direct translation for the orchid as she's named, Eva's Himno de la Madrugada. So Dave T, this one blooms for you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. You are so appreciated. Well, somewhere in this stick-like, really bizarre looking structure, there are four blooms. <laughs> this is Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. And I would like to dedicate these blooms to Hannah, Hope, Diane Randolph, and Nicole Undendun. Because yay! As you can see, the orchid as such, the older growths are going yellow. And there's a reason for that, not just because of age. And I'm saying yay, we got some blooms. Because huh, one of my favorite little orchids that grows like lightning speed their new growths did not produce a new growth for all of 2022. So, so disappointed. 
because it is so much fun to watch a dendrobium tetragonum go nuts with the way it grows its new growth. So yeah, that was a disappointment. But here we are with blooms that I completely did not anticipate, seeing as she has been extremely floriferous in the past years from all the nodes that she has grown since I received this orchid. And here we are. Really, so surprised. Love me the blooms of Dendrobium tetragonum. Anything that looks a little bit out of the ordinary ticks my boxes. Anything that is spotty ticks my boxes. And anything that has a fragrance as interesting as this one ticks my boxes. Now, it is better to be able to appreciate her fragrance when the sun is shining on her because then it gets really, really intense. It is not to everybody's liking and probably a bit surprising at first because you stick your nose in there and the first thing you get, it's acrid. I can't describe it any other way but when you can pass a building site and you smell the burning of aluminum as they're cutting through some metal, there's sort of an acrid smell in the air. That is what she smells like. And then followed by hints of jasmine. It's an acquired fragrance. <laughs> At first a bit surprising and possibly like, oop, you weren't expecting that. But after you know it, it's almost super, super interesting because it's as if your brain is tricking you. Are you smelling that weird acrid smell or not? Anyway, for me, it's not unpleasant. It makes her all the more unique. Now, she is looking a little bit patetico at the bottom here. Her lower growths are a little bit yellow, <clears throat> yes. And that is because I had some mite issues in the summer of 2022. I have never had mites in my collection. So I went to town as a preventative measure to not have my already not growing a new growth Dendrobium tetragonum get attacked by mites. And then, you know, the leaves would go downhill. Being a dendrobium, she objected just to the soapy wash insecticide that I was using. Thankfully, it only is appearing at the oldest growth, so phew, I think we got away with that one. I can also see over here, there's some more nodes getting activated. We may just get another blooming out of her after all, because normally she blooms two times a year for me. She has two flushes on all the growth. So this could be considered a little bit of a weak blooming compared to what I am accustomed to. But oh goodness, I will take a blooming knowing she is not stressed because her setup is lava rock with semi-hydro, a pot that she's been in for a very, 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 very long time. We're heading into the fifth year now that she's in that pot. I have no intentions of repotting her, so she is not stressed. Thankfully, we can appreciate and enjoy the blooms for the next three weeks, so to speak, approximately. And today is a beautiful, calm day to film these blooms, take pictures of them as well, be able to dedicate them to Hanne, Hope, Diane Randolph and Nicole Undundun because as you can see <laughs> the blooms are really kind of delicate. If we were to have a small breeze going through my little patio here it would be very very tough for the camera to focus on them and take proper pictures. So today is the day. Of course for 2023 I have high hopes. She did give me two growths in 2020. There is that saw cutting. If you can hear that saw cutting in the background, now imagine that fragrance. <laughs> that matches Dendrobium tetragonum. But anyway, for 2023, I happen to have high hopes. Now I'm kind of expecting two growths because in 2019, she did grow two new growths for me. And subsequent years, only one, skipping 2022. So yeah. Meanwhile, just once again, thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. Hannah, Hope, Diane Randolph and Nicole Undendun. I hope that you do like blooms that are a little bit out of the ordinary and that have a really unique fragrance. Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. She blooms for you and I hope you're doing well in your part of the world. I know that she may not look like much tiny tiny blooms but oh they are huge considering what this orchid has gone through so it is my absolute pleasure 
to dedicate the three blooms of my Hawaiara lava burst to Su Fien. And I hope that you like red, I hope that you like small, and I hope that you like survivors and fighters because this Hawaiara lava burst did not bloom for me since I got her in 2018. I almost lost her because I got the culture completely wrong. I thought to myself, pot, semi hydro, leka, in goes the lava burst and let her grow. Oh, I was wrong. So yeah, she came back <laughs> after many, many years. Here we are in 2023 and has bloomed out. Now her blooms have lasted a good part of six weeks already. And all the clips that you see are from all the time span that I've been able to observe how long the blooms last. And she is still in bloom today. It is absolutely remarkable. I'm going to give this orchid a little bit of a rest because six weeks is a long time for an orchid to be in bloom while the blooms are still looking fresh and there is no sign of decline. But for a survivor, I think it's best to cut the spike off and give her a little bit of a rest. So, so pleased though that I do have three blooms to share and I hope the next bloom cycle will show that she's going from strength to strength on her remarkable little scrubby pad mount. <laughs> she was one of the first that I attached to the scrubby pad instead of using EpiWeb. It was an inspiration from Michael McCarthy because EpiWeb is very expensive. This has worked a treat. And well, here we are, Sylvien. My How We Are a Lava Burst, my fighter survivor, is blooming for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. She is a perfect example of size is everything. While you were watching, and I hope you're still here with me, thank you for still being here with me if you are. I appreciate that additional support. While you are watching the Bloom's dedications, Cousin It reprimanded me that I was hardly enthusiastic at the beginning, and I was asking him to be enthusiastic, and he is so right. I do apologize. It would appear that the cold has gotten to my voice, so I didn't speak with as much enthusiasm and joy as I normally do. My apologies, Cousin It, you're absolutely right. Today is one of those days that whatever Cousin It says, goes because, you know, he has to endure the conditions, whereas I can go inside and make myself a nice cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> I do sincerely hope that you enjoyed what you saw. Thank you to everybody that was mentioned. Thank you to everybody that was not mentioned, but watches my videos. I appreciate you very, very much. Know that the way to get mentioned is to let me know that you are here. Leave a comment. I will add it to the list. Every new name that I can see and identify goes on that list. And eventually there will be blooms for you here on my channel. So if you have been on my channel for a while and have not been mentioned yet, you can see we are at episode 85. And I am in the month of April of 2022 on the list that I'm working through. Just to give you a perspective in case you're wondering, hey, I've been here a long time. My name has never come up. Let me just clear that up. Either your name has yet to come up and it takes a while for orchids to bloom out or you have not commented yet that I cannot see you. Or there is a third option and that is you have a private account meaning I cannot see you when you subscribe. And should that be the case, then please leave a comment so I can add you to the list. I don't want anybody to feel that I have ignored them or have missed them. That is not the intention for these Bloom's dedications. I want everybody to know I see you, I appreciate you, and I thank you. Episode 85. Wow. Who'd have thunk when I started this with episode one back in the day? Well, I'm happy I'm still here and I'm happy that you are too. Have yourselves a fabulous day from Cousin It and myself. We do put a condition on that though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Oh, I've got you. I've got you. Now I'm bringing you back. It's more snug there. It's not so exposed. And I've got you. The one thing I'm concerned about is breaking a nail. Yeah, and you, of course, a new growth. I understand. I get it. I don't want to break any of you either, so we'll just take it slow. I've got you. Boy.
Let's put you back in that little well you have created for yourself there. Let me check my nails. Oh, still got my nails. 